See, as you just heard, AB5 really has put thousands of people in a variety of professions out of work. They were freelancers, independent contractors, and now they're wondering how they're going to make a living here. Joining us now is a legislature who authored that bill, State Assembly Member Lorena Gonzalez. We want to thank you so much for joining us Thanks. tonight. I want to start with this. Um, I, I appreciate that you're taking people, saying there's thousands of people. There is no indication that there are thousands of people out of work. So I, I understand that's what you've been told by some folks, but there's absolutely no data or indication to suggest that thousands of people have been put out of work. So I want to explain really fast what AB5 is. In in April of 2018, there was a Supreme Court decision in California. It was unanimous and bipartisan. And it said, enough. We've had misclassification of employees forever. And we've had enough of it. So we're going to make it really clear. You're presumed to be an employee if you work for a company and do the work of that company. It's really clear and easy. Um, so we started with that. There were a lot of industries that said, oh, hold up. This doesn't work for us. So we codified it into law with AB5. It was a Supreme Court decision under Dynamex. We codified it into law and said, we've got to clean up our misclassification issues in California. And that's what we did with AB5. AB5 allows for legitimate small business, even sole proprietors, to operate as such. Um, they're, they're able to do so if they're actually operating as a small business. What it doesn't allow is a company to have permalancers, to have people who are freelancing for them um, with absolutely uh, working the same way as an employee would work, but without the benefits of an employee status. We and absolutely want to get to, uh, we want to have you be able to respond because sure. like we, we've heard what you have said about AB5. We've heard everything before the well, legislation. Well, you really haven't. I mean, you've had like well, 12 we, people on without And we actually want to give you an opportunity to respond here, to so. your words yes. as well. And we're not here to vilify you right. at all. Oh, we I just do want you, you to start hold on. Let me information. There hold are on. Let us, our format here is we're going to let each other okay. talk it out. Absolutely. I just want to make sure we're operating with. If you have a fact, okay. if you can show but something not, where you got that number from, you're not letting me. You've okay. got to let us talk. So just, I, I love a strong woman that wants to speak her mind and fight for other people. I love that. Thank so you. we want to let you do that, and we'll. We also want to. Uh, represent what we've heard and from our uh, sure. from our viewers also. Sure. So let's talk about uh, last month, just before AB5 went into effect, let's talk about the Vox Media Company because that was a big one and it got a lot of play on social media. Um, let's see, they announced they were laying off 200 freelancers, hiring 20 full and part-time jobs. Instead, they announced that they would be offering just 20 full and part-time jobs. And so you posted on, on Twitter because you did um, want yeah. to respond to so many people. First, this states the company had been contemplating the switch for two years. Second, mm -hmm. it clearly states that those contracted jobs are being converted to full and part-time jobs. I understand a contractor who doesn't want a job being upset, but that's certainly not all bad. So we want to ask, you know, what do you have to say sure. to those freelance journalists, those independent contractors who were working sure. and have now lost their jobs because of AB5, your bill? First of all, it wasn't a job. These aren't jobs. These are freelance positions that may be three hours a month and it may be 300 hours a month. It was how they were and, supporting themselves. And not, all, not all. Sometimes it was a site. Most, in fact, most people working for SB Nation, which is Vox, which is a highly funded news organization, um, were doing part-time blogs. And I'll tell you what happened. They were being sued long before AB5 for misclassifying their workers. The lawsuit said there was a freelancer who sued them who said, I am being forced to work um, well, uh, 30 hours a week, 30 hours a week, for $125 a month because they had a freelance contract. They were being controlled by the company, clearly misclassified long before AB5 came along because of that lawsuit. And Vox even said, we've been contemplating this for two years, a lawsuit that preceded AB5. We're going to change our employment practice. And I'll tell you, there are 200 folks who were writing for SB Nation, but they weren't writing full time. They weren't writing part time. These are folks who who run the gamut from writing um, once a month or once every three months to every single day. And but they said, gamut, okay. That gamut is exactly what they wanted, though, because it was their choice to, mm -hmm. to work when it suited their schedule, when it suited their budget, when it suited the rest of their life, just like we heard from that, that journalist. She was a military wife. Mm -hmm. So if her husband was away or not, depending on the age of the kid, you know, I can actually absolutely see that that is an attractive thing mm -hmm. to be able to do, which is 
is work when you can, but you don't have to. Sure. These are our choices and our freedoms that a lot of people are saying are now taken away. Sure. Well, if you want the opportunity to be an independent um, business, AB5 allows for that. You can be a sole proprietor. You can work as many times as you want for any organization. You just have to actually be a small business. What this said is if a company wants to use one individual over and over and over again and still not give them the benefits of um, a minimum wage, overtime, social security, workers' compensation, unemployment insurance, all the things that we expect out of employment that hopefully you receive here that other journalists receive in their jobs, that you can't have somebody do it more than 35 times in a year before you have to say, okay, they're actually an employee. But if there's an individual who's freelancing for multiple organizations who truly is a small business, it's in the bill that they can continue to do that. They can show that they're an independent business and contract with any publisher, any company, and continue to do that work. I am curious to know where you got that number 35. What, what was the rhyme or reason to that? Well, first of all, first of all, take it back. If you are a small business and a true independent business as a freelancer, you don't have a limit you can contract with as many different publishers as many times as you want throughout the year. What we said is if you're not, if you're truly just working for one organization, that you have to limit that. And we had negotiations with a, a number of journalist groups um, to say, what does that look like? If you work for somebody once a week, are you an employee? That's uh, our courts, before we even decided this, said if you work for somebody even once, you're an employee, if you're doing the work of that company. Let's play so, some sound oh, that we had with a political okay. cartoonist well, about how AB5 is right. affecting her. Even if you're exempt, and even if it doesn't affect you like me, um, companies are already starting to fire their independent contractors because they just don't want to be in, in, in non-compliance. And I don't blame them I would, if, you know, because they can hire from anywhere. And this is kind of what we were just talking about, but we want to follow up. So what do you say to that about people who don't want a single job? They want the flexibility. They uh -huh. want to be able to freelance. Yeah, and, sure. and I understand where you say they have to be their own corporation. Not their own corporation. Or they can be sole business. proprietor. They have to be their own business. Right. But then on the other side, those corporations don't want to hire people because they're so confused about this. And they don't want to have to take on the responsibility of another employee. And so these folks... They're not getting hired if they're from yeah. California, is what she told us. So let's be clear. You said hire and fire. Those are words we use for employees. And most corporations and most businesses abide by the law. They hire employees. That means that employee has certain rights. Um, they have the right to Social Security, which independent contractors don't. When a company doesn't actually hire somebody as an employee, they're skirting the responsibilities of contributing to their Social Security. They have the right to um, at least minimum wage and overtime, workers' compensation, paid family leave, sick days. So when a company says, we don't want to take that on, the best they can do is contract with a business. That means nobody's getting hired and fired. It's a vendor relationship. And if you have the ability to have that vendor relationship, great. But if we just said any person could come along and say, it's okay to, to treat me differently as an employee. It's okay to hire me and not pay me minimum wage or overtime. It's okay to not have to contribute to my social security. That becomes a standard for all of us. And that means none of us will have a job that actually pays into those things. That means no employee employer would be responsible for that because they could say we're just going to hire people who don't care if we give them these protections. The state is here to provide protections. Labor laws apply to ensure that all of us have something there. If you allow a company, and we've seen journalism companies, we've seen Coast News, in fact, it's a great example, I, I think it was a tribute there, where they fired all their employees, they fired them, and said we will rehire you as an independent contractor. So no longer do you get any benefits, no longer do you have any protections, you can come work for us in this provision. By the way, when they have to compete, when other companies have to compete against them, that's unfair competition for the companies who are doing the right thing and abiding by but state law. Isn't that their choice? Wouldn't yeah. that be my choice to decide if I want to work for that company? I mean, you, AB5 has really taken the choice away from me, and it's been made for me before I've even gotten a chance to step up to the plate. Well, absolutely. Is it your choice if you want to work for less than minimum wage? Do we allow that? It's Is my it choice if I want to have a full-time job or if I want to have a nine-to-five job, if I want to work in an office or my home. Home? That's still your choice. That's mm. still your choice. But what we don't allow is companies to say, we will only hire people who are willing to give up their, their, their protections for minimum wage, for overtime. Uh, it, it's, let's take it way back, right? This is labor law in the United States in general. We don't allow people to say, 
Um, I have a 12 year old who wants to work. It's their choice. They want to work. Go ahead and let them work. We don't allow that because then it's a race to the bottom. What we want to ensure that it's a fair playing field and that businesses who do the right thing aren't put at a competitive disadvantage. And let's be honest, this doesn't just affect that worker of choice. This affects all of us because when a worker doesn't have workers' compensation or health care, what happens when they go to the emergency room? Let's say you have a photographer who's not employed. They have no workers' comp, they have no health care, and they're out shooting something and fall into a ditch and break their leg. They go to the emergency room and who pays for that? We all do. So that choice costs us as taxpayers and costs us as a society. And actually it costs us in California eight billion dollars a year there for misclassification. To like with, that, that sound really good in this, but what about the people who were contractors, who were self-employed and they liked the way that their setup was? It makes it so that this, it's like the government is telling them you don't actually know how to negotiate for yourself, and so we're going to step in and help you. But other, but some of these people um, that are affected by this are saying, "No, we love the way that our work system was set up." In we, fact, we, and have, we, have, we said, have a little bit of sound. But, but from let's the translate. Be, I, I want to take that back, though. This bill specifically says you can be self-employed. You can have a business and contract well, with well, a business. Well, that costs them money to have to incorporate and become a business. They don't there are have a lot to of incorporate. Costs it says in their sole proprietor, which doesn't cost a cent. And today, in the governor's budget, those those folks who want to form an LLC, which usually costs eight hundred dollars a year, are going to be forgiven this year to do that. This year. So you can be a sole proprietor, which costs nothing. You could be an LLC, and in this year's budget, we're going to provide relief for that. So there are opportunities for people to create a true small business and be a business person. We just want that to be formalized and make sure they're paying their taxes, they're, they're responsible for themselves, and they have the ability to negotiate and set their own rates. I want you to hear from this person because she is a translator. She's actually done work for you. Sure. And um, she's been doing this for more than three decades. She's voted for you, but she feels betrayed by this legislation. We talked to her earlier this week. Take a listen to this. Because you want to unionize, I should be out of a job. I have the same right to work in this state, just like everybody else. And again, I, all I'm asking is let me do my job. Let me pay taxes to bring revenue to the state. You're penalizing me for what? For actually being a taxpayer who wants to work and does not want to be on the welfare rolls? I don't want to be on it. I love this country. It makes no sense to me. This is beyond politics for me. And I think it is for all of us. It is about our livelihood at this point. So now she's saying she has lost the ability to make a living because of AB5. And I, I, I'm sorry, and I, I feel that she does feel that way, but I don't think it's true. We have companies who are hiring translators directly. In fact, we have multiple companies who are in favor of this law because they have already been doing the right thing. And they said, we're providing services and employing people, but we're undercut by these companies who don't have to provide those same benefits. Well, those are union translators. No, they're no, parts no, of, they're paying into not. it. Absolutely not. We don't even have union translators except in the court system. We're talking about p companies that it has nothing to do with union or non-union. It has to do with, are you an employee or not? Just because somebody is employee does not mean they're union. That's ludicrous. It'd be great for, I think it'd be great if all employees were unionized, but that's not the situation. We're talking about small businesses who say, I've done the right thing. I've hired people as employees. I pay the taxes I'm supposed to pay. I pay into their social security, 7.5% of their income into Medicare. I, I give them paid sick days. I give them um, paid family leave. If I have to lay them off, they get unemployment insurance. They get workers' compensation. They get health care. And then I have to compete against a company who says, oh, no, no, no. All my workforce is just independent contractors. So we need to look out for the businesses that are doing the right thing. We need to look out for California taxpayers who are acting as a safety net for folks who are just kind of on their own. And that that translator, just like everybody else, if they want to start their own business and be a sole proprietor and, and contract with different people, they can do that under this law. There's so much misinformation about what AB5 actually does, and it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that um, one side has been portrayed in the media without a full explanation of what this actually does. And what we say is this, if you want to have your own company, if you want to be your own own sole proprietor business, you can do that. As long as you set your own hours, you negotiate your own terms, you're on, you're on your own and you're contracting with different folks and putting yourself there as a small business, absolutely nothing in AB5 stops this. But if you're working for one company 
and you're doing the work of that company, you are an employee and should yeah, be treated as such. I want to ask you this, because this was a guy that we had come on just yesterday. He was amazing. He's from a dance theater here in La Jolla. You just mm -hmm. met with him, he said, since this went into I think we've met with him law. five times in our office. And so he said, let's listen to what he said, if we can play that real quick. AB5 right now makes an assumption, I think, about self-employed people and people that work as an independent contractor. It sort of assumes that we're not capable in a way of negotiating our own terms and conditions. So like AB5 is here to save us somehow, but we don't need saving. We are self-employed, independent people exercising our right as citizens to be self-employed, to work as independent contractors. We don't need the help. We can negotiate our own contracts. We can negotiate the pay that we need to have a nice quality of life, and we're good said that you told him that you were going to look at who is exempt and non-exempt and maybe and not maybe but that you were you guys were looking at redefining that is that true uh, we have a second part of this law to to go back and um, make sure that it's clear uh, again the law says if you're truly an, a, a sole proprietor if you're truly your own business nothing in AB5 we said it when we are passing it on the floor, it says it in the bill. It spells out that you are fully exempt from this law if you are sole proprietor and have the ability to negotiate your own terms. It says it in the law. I'm not sure why people have skipped over that part, but they have. We wrote a letter to the journal, which is an official letter to say on legislative um, terms that the, the prospect of this bill is not to intervene between somebody who's truly a small business contracting with another business. So. If that needs further clarification, absolutely. We've already introduced a bill. We will full, further clarify it. But let me tell you what this bill does. And it's, it, I, I'm a little, we're, we're going through people who are upset about the bill. I've heard from hundreds of people who now have jobs, who are happy, who wanted an actual job. Most of us are secure in having an actual job that ensures that they have minimum wage, that ensures that they have overtime, sick pay, social security paid in. And I ask people to ask around, because you will find somebody in every one of your families, and I guarantee this, who thought they had a job. And tax season but comes along. Wait, 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 wait. So oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. I know, but 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 there, anything that you're there, there are tons of people who are just happy. Gonna plow ahead? Well, let's talk about this though. How many people do you know? Because I know quite a few who, at the end of the tax year, got a 1099 and didn't realize that they had to pay all their taxes. But for the themselves. thousands of people, really, who I don't feel media, like they're affected. Social yes. media. I mean, okay. we have a tweet back from uh, the response from social media. I mean, you're saying that everybody's happy, and you're hearing from everybody happy. Surely, can we take that off? Surely. Surely there are people who are not happy. Surely no. there are people who are not happy. But you're saying thousands. I haven't seen thousands. I, I've seen some loud voices on Twitter. Um, I and, have heard and you've from been loud just, back, let's I, be honest, because I, oh, you've absolutely, been very loud back. Because I'm sitting here with you and trying to get through even what this bill does, and we're not even getting that information out because you're just saying, well, these people aren't happy. Let me tell you about the people who are happy. Can I tell you okay. for a minute about the people that are happy? There are thousands of people, actually thousands, because I can get you the court cases. I can get you the people. But we also have wait, protesters wait, wait, out wait. front. We have eight protesters. So can I, can I at but least no, talk about the bill? No, no, we're not going to talk about the benefits of the bill well, at all. Well, we have been. And no, no, we've never talked about eight, Can I talk what the bill actually form, meant? And so I, we're going to have to thank you. Okay, Thank you so much for coming. Coming in. Of course. Um, again, uh, clearly the discussion is going to continue. We're going to have more coming your way in just a minute.